HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll get you caught up with the latest Hiller sports highlights. The Hopkinton Women's Club hosted their annual Meet the Candidates Night and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. On Saturday, April 27th, starting at 1.30 p.m., Learn about the dangers of ticks at the Hopkinton Public Library. The event, sponsored by Friends of Whitehall, will host entomologist Larry Dapsis to discuss the dangers of ticks and answer questions from the public. Tick diseases are completely preventable. Come learn how on Saturday, April 27th, 1.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Library. On Monday, April 29th, EHOP hosts the 7th Annual Know Your Vote program. The event will take place starting at 6.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton High School Library. If you have a question about town meeting, this is a must-watch program. You may submit questions a number of ways, including attending the forum, or in advance by email at knowyourvote at ehop.org. Find out more at ehop.org. On Wednesday, May 1st, HCAM will host the annual Town Election Contested Races Debate. The debates will start at 7 p.m. There are five contested races at this year's Town Election, including Board of Selectmen, Town Moderator, Commissioners of Parks and Recreation, Commissioners of Trust Funds, and a two-year term for the Planning Board. The debates will take place Wednesday, May 1st, 7 p.m. at the HCAM Studios on 77 Main Street. Find out more at hcam.tv. The Hopkinton Women's Club hosted their annual Meet the Candidates Night and a number of this year's candidates for town election showed up to talk a little bit about themselves and answer questions from residents. Here's a look. The Hopkinton Women's Club hosted the 32nd annual Meet the Candidates Night. The five contested races this year are Board of Selectmen, Planning Board two-year term, Town Moderator, Parks and Recreation Commission, and Trust Funds Commissioner. Here's a look at the candidates who attended Meet the Candidates Night in the contested races. I've been privileged to serve as town moderator. Uh, I committed uh, three years ago to being informed on the issues that will come before town meeting, to be nonpartisan in terms of the conduct of the meeting, and to, be, to, to conduct a meeting that's efficiently run so that we're mindful and respectful of the time of those Hopkinton voters who do end up participating in our town meeting. We residents have the opportunity to participate in governing at town meeting. This year, we'll be talking schools, the fire department, infrastructure, and an almost $100 million budget. As Hopkinton's town moderator, I will commit to ensuring that all voices are heard that our town meeting is efficient, and we keep moving forward together. I was uh, with the Board of Assessors here a number of years ago. Uh, as the Deputy Assessor, I spent 10 years being employed by the Town of Hopkinton. And then I worked for the State Senate for 10 years, State Senator David Mignani, who uh, represented Hopkinton, 
and the surrounding communities, and I was his district director. I am running because as we enjoy the community resources, we believe in giving back. My dad was active in community services and taught us the same values. That is why I joined the Appropriations Committee four years ago, as soon as we came to this town. I am running because Hopkinton is going through an important growth and transition time, and I can add value with my strategic leadership, planning, and budget experience. I've never voted in a town other than Hopkinton. I'm finishing up my first term as selectman in May and hope that you'll vote for me so I can serve a second. <coughs> Professionally, I'm a full-time nurse manager in a dementia unit. I deal with very sensitive and emotionally charged situations each and every day. I rest my hat on my decision-making process in that it's nothing but honest and fair. I offer leadership focused on keeping Hopkinton a prosperous and well-managed town and maintaining our strong schools, our community character, and our quality of life. I've lived in Hopkinton for almost 40 years, almost my entire adult life. And for about 30 of those, I've served this town on a wide variety of boards and committees. Um, I was attracted all those years ago to the small town that we were, and in particular, the lakes, the trails, the parks, the incredible natural resources that we have here. They're very special and near and dear to my heart. My goal, if elected, is to use both my local and professional knowledge to help enhance and maintain the use of our assets in a responsible way to continue providing memorable experiences for all the people of Hockington. I heard why Hopkins was a great place to live because of all these bylaws and how the town was structured and, and it was all a great place to live. In recent years, um, my dad, like many others, some of that positive has turned more into concern. And that's what basically was the straw that broke the camel back. And that concern from people that talked to me caused me to run for planning board and help uh, step up and do something to be the voice of those people that have concern. But I did, I was on the library trustees for three terms, and I was there when the library, the old library, and now obviously the new library. And to be honest, you know, doing it after three terms, I'm, I'm ready for something else. And I've always been intrigued with the planning board and the issues are, that the planning board wrestles with. And, you know, building and all the development is such a hot topic. So I think, I thought I learned a lot in the planning board. I loved it. I worked with Susan, it was awesome. But I'm, I'm just ready for a change. I think I can bring a fresh perspective. The, the commissioners have three principal duties. The first is managing and controlling the funds. The second is ensuring that the very complicated and strict legal terms of each trust are adhered to. And the last is ensuring that the wishes of the benefactors are honored. The HCAM annual contested races debate will take place Wednesday, May 1st, starting at 7 p.m. Town election is May 20th. Right after our short break, we have Hiller Girls Across, baseball, softball highlights, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. This week on HCAM Ed, the staff at the Marathon Elementary School answers the question to, what is social emotional? It's unbelievable when you see them acknowledge that they did something on their own. And when you're able to give them those specifics, that's that growth mindset. Knowing that you can get smarter, that you can learn more, that you can always progress. And as adults, we're always learning too. Rocky is about four years old and he was um, an owner surrender. If I remember correctly, he was uh, he belonged to somebody who was elderly. and went into assisted living and the rest of the family couldn't take him. Um, so he's here. Um, he is pretty chunky. He could deal with being on a diet. Um, I think he weighs about 20 pounds. Um, but he's perfectly healthy. He just likes his food. And um, he's, he's pretty okay with uh, other cats. We don't really know about dogs. Um, 
and probably um, okay with calmer, older children. Um, so that's about it about him. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton Hillers girls lacrosse took on Mansfield last week and got the scoring started early and often. Here's a look. On Thursday, April 18th, the 2-2 two two Hopkinton Hillers girls lacrosse team took on 1-2 Mansfield. The first half was a whole lot of scoring for one of the teams. Five minute halves here in these Girls across contest, and there's a goal. one nothing Hillers. Cammie McDonald for the opening score at 24.05. Left to go in the first half. O'Connor going to swing it around. Here she goes. Looking for a shot. There it is. 2 nothing Hillers. Cockins looking for a feed, and a great feed of Cammie McDonald, who puts it in for score number three for the Hillers. A 3-0 lead for Hopkinton. Second goal of the day for Cammie McDonald, the juniors. The midfielder with the pass up to Olivia O'Connor. Out in front, Cockins looking for a shot, and that is in, 4-1 Hillers with possession. York, able to get it to her right. There's a shot and a goal, Catherine Dacey. With the score, the sophomore makes it 5-1. The Hillers, they're going to be patient. they got a comfortable lead. They're going to swing it around, try to find an opening. No rush here. Cassidy. Donald now over to Dacey. And that's the benefit of having a bit of a pad to work with, as you can find an opportunity like that. An opportunity to get it to Cammie McDonald. And she had the nice open shot from right in front to make it 6-1. to one. And that score comes with 6.22 left, exactly one minute after the fifth Hiller's goal of the day. And Cam Swinging around, Cockins out in front, shot, goal! Hillers, Liza Worrell. The score comes with 3.20 left to go. The Hillers starting to pour it on a little bit. Morell. Morell rushing in. There's a shot and another Hiller's goal. 8 to 1 Hopkinton. Eliza Morell with her second of the day. Here she comes along the far side. Not a lot of time to work with. Five seconds. Maybe the Hiller's going to try to get one last shot off Dacey out in front. And they do. And a score. The Hillers outscore Mansfield in the first half. 9 to 1. And they never looked back taking the game by a final score of 16-6. Hopkinton improved to 3-2 overall with the victory. This past week we had a whole lot of Hiller softball and some baseball for you. Here's a look at the latest Hiller highlights. Hiller softball took on Norton this past Tuesday. Bottom of the third, Hiller's got the scoring going. The 1-0, and this is roped into center field. Emily Whalen around to score. Katie Holly is behind her. She will come around to score, and it is going to be a two-run double for Alyssa McIntyre. The Hillers take the 2-0 lead. And Kessler gets a piece of this one up the right side. Glove by the second baseman. Throw to first. But a run will come around to score. And that is a sacrifice ground out for Kester. And she'll be credited with the RBI. And she'll get a piece of this one over to right field. And it's dropped. And another run will come around to score. Chevary reaches on the right fielder's error. And Alyssa McIntyre comes around for the fourth Hillers run. Top of the fourth, Norton trying to get some offense going, but Katie Holly had other plans. Lineup and the pitch. 
Hit high in the air, over to center field. Katie Holly with an incredible catch. She had a range way in and came to a slide and was able to glove it for out number two. What a defensive play by Katie Holly. The tremendous catch was out number two. The next hitter flew out to end the inning. Hillers added on in the bottom of the fourth. Bignani striking out twice so far. But she'll get a piece of this one over to right field. It goes, that's going to get down. For a base hit, McCluskey rounding first, heading to second, and it rolls all the way to the fence out there. Holly 0-4-1 with a walk. And she'll get a piece of this one over to center field. It goes, McCluskey being waved around. She's gonna head home and score the fifth Hillers run of the game. An RBI double for Katie Holly. Top of the seventh, sophomore Destiny McGrath at the plate with her Norton Lancers trailing five to nothing. And this is ripped oh. in the air, and that is gone, a home run. Destiny McGrath tattoos that ball, and it's a five to two ball game. That was absolutely crushed beyond the right center fence. She hits the two run homer, but that would be it for Norton. The Hillers take the game five to two. The next day, the Hillers took down Westwood 22 to 10 and improved to six and one overall on the season. That same day, Hillers baseball took on Bridgewater Raynham. Hillers drove in some runs in the bottom of the second. There's a ball hit down the left field line, and that's fair. Kelly's turning to third. He's going to go home. Throw into third base, not in time. And Cole's got a two bagger and an RBI. That up. That's beaten down the first base line. Picked up. Kennedy's got to squeeze it. That's your 45 foot base hit. One that will leave you shaking your head on the way back to the dugout. Here's a ground ball to the left side, picked up by the shortstop. He's got to squeeze it. The run scores. It's three to nothing. Bottom of the fourth, Cole Glasper and struck again. There's a ground ball in the right field. That's going to score Kelly. And he's two for two. Well, I guess Cole didn't stick his foot in his mouth as he usually does. Didn't say he was going to get any hits. I asked him how many bags he was going to swipe today. He said, I've never seen you run. The run put the Hillers up four to nothing. They would hang on for the five to three win. Hillers improved to five and one overall with the win. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, April 26th at 5 p.m., songs, poems, and stories are shared by poet Alan O'Hare and his friends on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, April 29th at 7 p.m., EHOP helps you get ready for the upcoming town election in Know Your Vote, live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m. on HCAM Ed, Dr. Kavanaugh sits down with Hopkinton School's Finance Director Susan Rothermick on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill. On Tuesday, April 30th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Conservation Commission meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, May 1st at 7 p.m., the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Thursday, May 2nd at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hiller Softball vs. Dover Sherbin game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town.
If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. The Board of Selectmen recently approved three ballot questions for the 2019 annual town election. If, if the board is so inclined, you could move a motion uh, directing the town manager to forward the following three ballot questions to the town clerk's office. Uh, question number one, shall the town of Hopkinton be required to reduce the amount of real estate and personal property taxes to be assessed for the fiscal year beginning July 1st? 2020 by an amount equal to 1,180,568. Question 2. Shall the Town of Hopkinton be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase a ladder truck for the fire department? Question 3. Shall the Town of Hopkinton be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and one half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase land for parking in the downtown or next to Town Hall? Okay. All right. The motion has, um, would someone like to um, put that motion forward? So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? So if we do a, when, when's the last day that we can pull any one of these off? At this point, I don't believe the town will, or the board will have the ability to pull any one of these off. Instead, the board could move a motion at town meeting to take no action if there's if there's an associated article Got with the question. Yep. Yep. However, as we have learned in the past, the state takes elections seriously. If you say the ballot question, it will be on the ballot. <laughs> but if it doesn't pass a town meeting, it doesn't matter at the ballot. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So these three ballot questions, which are just the motion's been made and seconded, we vote these. These are, these are going to be set on the ballot. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. John Hancock once again brought some elite Kenyan runners to visit Elmwood with the Scholars and Stars program. As always, the students had a great time and enjoyed meeting some of the elite Kenyan athletes. <laughs> And you can just walk around it. So you put water in it. So for carrying. And then this is for his now for people who are leaders. Leaders. Like if you if you're chosen in your community to be a leader, they give you something like this. And then you go around, you talk with it. So there was a president, Moy. Yeah, Moy. Moy used, yeah, he was more president of Kenya. He used to talk to this. Did you have a good time? Yeah. How do you like meeting all the runners? Awesome, kind of. Do you have a favorite runner? Uh, Joffrey. How come? Uh, because he won the Boston Marathon and we made a poster. Mr. Keene's class, as always, showed off some of their wonderful studies of the Kenyan culture prior to the ceremony. How are you enjoying Elmwood today? Are you having a good time? Yes. 
Yes, it's fun. You know? uh, how do you like uh, meeting all the students and seeing all they did about uh, Kenya, all the hard work? And it's great. They're excited and uh, they're they're asking us a lot of questions about you know all the stuff that we have here. Like, what's the meaning of it? They want to know much about it, so it's really exciting to be here with them. Is this your first time here? It's my first time. She won it before. Excellent. Uh, are you uh, ready for the marathon on Monday? Yep. We are excited. Excellent. And um, hopefully the weather will be uh, better than last year. Yeah, that's what we are hoping. So we will see what happens. But no matter what, we have to race anyway. So we are excited for anything that comes on Monday. Yeah. You, you enjoy to see the students? I enjoy it. How do you like the hard work? Uh, I've seen everything that we have in Kenya. Uh, you, are, you have it in uh, USA. And I'm happy to, to meet to think such things like this in this country because it is our culture to have it in Kenya. Some students also got a chance to run a couple laps with the athletes around the bus loop. No, it's uh, very motivating. The amount of work and uh, time they put into it is very encouraging. You know that people are study about us, study about where we come from. So that when you come here and run, we're just not any other skinny Kenyan running. But we, they personalize us and learn so much about us. And we, it's very surprising to know how much they know about each and every one of the athletes here today. Elmwood students made a donation to the Kenyan Children's Foundation. It's amazing uh, to know that these kids come together, they sacrifice their, their money, their little money they get from their parents to be able to help other kids back in Kenya who cannot get what they have and they help them to get it. So this donation goes a long way. This gives a chance to kids to go to school in Kenya and be able to study and get the education that these kids are getting. I'm so excited and I'm so thankful.